Following Tottenham's defeat to Fulham, Spurs' Champions League hopes hang in the balance. But with Aston Villa drawing with West Ham on Sunday, there is still a chance Spurs can finish in the top four or even fifth, depending on the coefficient. There was a lot of things to take away from that match on the pitch, but I'm going to be talking about stuff that happened off the pitch and afterwards in the 24 hours that followed. I speak for most Spurs fans here who say they've already fallen in love with Ange Postacoglu this season. His football is a breath of fresh air. His tactics are revolutionary and the players are playing to the best of their ability. But against Fulham, it went a bit out the window. It was one of our worst games of the season and Spurs struggled in many factors on the pitch. Which left Ange Postacoglu frustrated and some of his quotes in the media afterwards were very telling. And this season, Ange Postacoglu has had certain run-ins with the media. You know, some of them have been quite jovial and some of them have been quite serious. A highlight included Friday's press conference in particular. That's, real, that's, real, that's really harsh, yeah? Because I'll tell you why. Because I'm probably plastic and touristy because I was coming from the other side of the world really passionate about football. And also, who could forget when he was asked about becoming a potential Liverpool manager and he mentioned the Fonz. But, you know, you, you grow up and... Things change, uh, you know. I used to love happy days back there too, but you know, <laughs> I don't have posters of Fonzie on my wall either. So, you know, it's just, it's just the way life is. Enough about that. We want to talk about what happened after the Fulham game because, you know, Ange had some choice words to say about the football club and certain questions he was asked about the top four race. So today we're asking the question, is Ange Postacoglu right about Tottenham Hotspur? So I'm going to get straight into it and play the clip of Ange talking to the media straight after the game. I don't see fourth as a prize. This club's finished fourth before, it's finished second before. So you can throw all sorts of things at it, it's reached a Champions League final, you can throw all sorts of things at it, but this club has achieved things. So fourth is not my end goal. I don't want to finish fourth if we haven't grown as a team and developed as a team. And no one believes me, that's fine, because I think they, you know, part of the narrative is to try and push you into these kind of positions where you think that fourth is some kind of achievement that you, gives you something for next year. It doesn't give you anything unless fourth would be great if I feel like we're, we're growing as a team and we've created something that's going to bring us success next year. But fourth is not our goal. It hasn't been. It's not my goal. It certainly isn't my goal. But, you know, I get it from, from the outside and particularly in the Premier League that it seems like, you know, People push you into that position where you need to succeed or fail just on an outcome. And I just don't think that's how you get success. Success is built on, I think, more tangible stuff. If we finish fifth and I think we've got a team to challenge next year, I won't be disappointed. So yeah, he was asked about Spurs wasting an opportunity because if they had beaten Fulham, they would have leapfrogged Villa into top four. You know, Villa did get the draw against West Ham, but, you know, if goal difference had swung the other way, we could still be above them in a few weeks to come. But that is not the case as of yet. And, you know, certain quotes I want to pick out. He says, you can level any accusations you want. I get it. And I'm happy for people to run that sort of commentary because it's meaningless to me. I don't see fourth as the prize. This club has finished fourth before. It's finished second before. You can throw all types of things at it. It's reached the Champions League final. You can throw all sorts of things, but this club has achieved things. So fourth is not my end goal. You know, he said this before. He was, um, Ange Postacoglu appeared on TalkSport earlier in the season speaking about the top four race. So speaking about, you know, what does he want to achieve with Spurs? You know, the trophy hoodoo. I bring this up on most videos lately. The trophy hoodoo that hangs over Spurs. A lot of Spurs fans, including myself, want to see us win silverware. Want to see us compete with the very best. And sees this as a long-term project, which is understandable. But, you know... When it comes to, you know, pleasing people short term and long term, you know, fans can be divided over this situation. And I want to see, you know, we've tried managers who tried the short term to win trophies. It did not work. And is a project manager. You've got to look at the likes of Arsenal, the likes of Liverpool, who have got into these projects and really got going. That's what it is all about. 
per se. That's what I think. But I can understand, one, Angie's frustration. I can understand Spurs' fans' frustration. I was annoyed after losing to Fulham. We shouldn't really be losing to Fulham 3-0 in the Premier League, even in this current state. With the be We've got better quality players than them. No offence to Fulham, but we should have really been putting them to the sword. And also got a bit spiky in his post-match interview with Sky Sports. A Daily Mail article read this. Spurs boss and Postacoglu get spiky with Sky Sports post-match interview Emma Saunders sarcastically claiming their top four hopes are over and they will settle for sixth after Fulham loss. Might as well roll the clip. Whilst you remain six points ahead of Manchester United, how much of a dent do you feel this might be on your top four hopes, especially after the steps forward last weekend? Um, yeah, look, it's all over, so we'll just go for six. I mean, you know, what am I supposed to say to that? I mean, we're, we're what, we're two points behind Villa, yeah, so... What does that mean with 10 games to go? We've got 10 games to go. Just with the huge strides forwards beating Aston Villa yeah, but... last weekend, the chance to capitalise on that tonight, yeah. put yourself into those top four places, just psychologically? Yeah, psychologically, I don't really worry about that stuff. It's 10 games to go. There's so much football to be played. Uh, if we had a one today, nothing was guaranteed. If we had a loss last week, nothing was guaranteed. It's 10 games to play, so I don't worry about that stuff. I never have. For me, I keep trying to it's not about just falling into a place on the ladder you know we can finish fourth great and everyone's happy brilliant it's nothing that hasn't been done this football club before it's about how we play that's all i'm interested in so we were disappointing today so we've got to learn from that move forward and tackle the next game we know you know i keep saying long-term ambitions at tottenham it is understandable this team is still not there yet we still need a couple of transfers you know maybe a different striker we've had a lot of injuries this season we've had a lot to get through and to be where we are you've got to be grateful we've got to be happy where we've got to and now we're on the cusp of something you know it did go a bit spursy against fulham but i still think we've all got to remain positive as a fan base i've seen a lot of specifically talk sport callers ringing in calling and a one-trick pony saying that they're not sure about him now and i'm like I feel like that's quite reactionary. I really think that's quite reactionary. Um, but I'd say the majority of the fan base are still backing Ange and what he believes in. Um, you know, mate, you can question his substitutes at the weekend. You can question that sort of thing. But is Ange right about with what he said? I think so. You know, he's gone about it a certain way. I don't think, you know, it's not like how Conte basically slammed the players after the Southampton defeat. He has basically been quite open and honest um, here and in a quite polite way. You know, it is a project. It is about, you know, we're, we're not at the end yet. We're still on the journey. We're so early in the journey um, to getting where we want to be. You know, I mentioned it the other day. Is top four, you know, the be all and end all? Financially, yes. You know, we want to be competing in the competition. I want us to get top four this year. But, you know... Is one result in a whole season which has been quite magnificent? You know, should it all be pinned on that? I'm not so sure. I feel like we've still got to, as I say, remain positive, back this manager, and hopefully we can keep going. Maybe we have to have a change with Levy. Maybe we have to have a change with Enoch or Joe Lewis, whoever owns the club now. But I think the club are putting the setting stones finally to get to where we want to be. You know, it's a shame we're not winning a trophy this year. But I still remain positive that under Ange Postacoglu, we can do all of these things. And I don't even think it's prickly, as it's been described, or spiky. It seems to be a similar words, don't they? I feel like Ange is just, that's the way he handles the media. He bats it off, water off a duck's back. You know, I don't really look too far into it. Um, I just think, you know, I'm, I'm still reading these quotes out thinking, you know, I understand what this is. I understand what he means. It is very much, you know, last night it was just, you know, the, against Fulham, just did not work out for the best. And it is just a one-off, you know. We've had a couple of games where it's gone a bit wrong, but this felt a bit different. Uh, because we were quite woeful, whereas in the other games, we were quite unlucky. But, um, you know, goals are long-term for Ange, I think. You know, 
not just this season. We're not living in the moment. At, like, you know, we've got a long way to go. We will get there. Come on, Spurs fans. Back this manager. Let me know what you thought of Angie's quotes. Do you agree with him? Do you disagree with him? I think most of you will agree with what he says and are looking at that long-term vision. But if you have enjoyed this video, why don't you leave a like on it. Subscribe to Sunny Talk Spurs. Hit that notification bell. And also become a member in the link down below. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to be putting a podcast live this week. Get your questions down below for the podcast featured in the Q&A. It'd be really, really good. But yeah, until the next video, massive international break. If you want any, you know, certain video ideas for me to explore, maybe transfers, maybe player deep dives, let me know and I'll be, you know, really up for getting involved and doing them. But yeah, until next time, I'll see you very soon. Ciao.